This is algebra 2 with trig 4.7. This is the second day of working with 4.7. This is completing the square. We're specifically going to look at how to turn standard form into vertex form. Vertex form, remember, is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So we're looking here at standard form, which we would say was ax squared plus bx plus c. That would be your typical way to explain standard form. When we deal with completing the square, trying to turn standard form into vertex form, we're going to take our equation and we typically will equal it to zero. We want to move our c value to the other side of the equal sign. We're going to take our b value, divide it by 2, and square it. So that becomes negative 5, and we'll square that, which is 25. We take the 25, and we add it to both sides of our equal sign. We got to keep our equation balanced. So now, what's the point of adding the 25 to this side? This has now turned it into a perfect square. That's why we call this completing the square, because we just made the left-hand side of the equal sign a perfect square trinomial. The leading coefficient, remember, has to be 1. The value up here that you're going to square, your b divided by 2, is always the number that will go in here. If you think this out the long way, x times x makes x squared. x and a negative 5, negative 5 and an x would make negative 10x. A negative 5 and a negative 5, if you were to foil this all together, would become 25. So here we are at a, at a critical point. If we were to solve this, we would take the square root of both sides. But remember, we're looking for vertex form. So if we're putting this into vertex form, we're going to subtract the 3 back across. You could say equals y. A lot of times we like to have the y on the left side. So there's our vertex form, and we can write what the vertex is. The vertex is looking right at you. It's at positive 5, negative 3. Remember, it's always the opposite of what's inside the parentheses. We'll take our equation. We'll start out with 18x plus 95 equals 0. Subtract the 95 to the other side. Take your b value, divided by 2. So now we just found the value that is used to complete our square. So we add it to the left side and we also add it to the right side. So the left side, 9 times 9 is going to multiply to be 81 and it adds to be 18. Remember, we're squaring the, the positive 9, so that's what goes inside there. Positive 9. And then on this side, we get negative 14. So if we were solving, we would then take the square root of both sides, because we do not have a b value. You can take the square root only if you don't have a b value. Up here, we have b values.
you cannot take the square root there. In this case, we don't have a b value. So that's how we go about solving it, as we have in an earlier lesson. Right now, we're trying to put this in vertex form. So we're going to add the 14 across, and this can equal y. So our vertex is going to be located at negative 9, positive 14. Our next example, you're going to notice that the A value is something larger than 1. Let's start off like we have all the other ones. We'll equal it to 0. We'll subtract across the 7. Now, we talked about how the a value has to be 1 when you complete the square. So we have to factor our 5, just the 5, not the x. Factor the 5 out of our left side of the equal sign. Then we're going to take the b value divided by 2, square that, add it to the left side, and we need to add something to the right side. Typically, we would add the same number, we would add 1. But if you place a 1 here inside the parentheses to make this quadratic a perfect square, what has been included to the left side has actually been 5 times the 1. So you've actually put a 5 on the left side. By writing a 1 and multiplying that by 5, you've really put a 5 on the left side. So this is x plus 1 squared equals negative 2. And then add the 2 across. We have written that in vertex form. The vertex would be at negative 1 comma 2. Here we're going to use the process of completing the square to answer the question. We have the height of a ball that was thrown up in the air after t seconds, and it's given by this function. Find the maximum height of the ball. So we have a building. We have some person that's about to throw an object. And we're going to take the 16t squared, negative 16t squared, plus 64t plus 50 equal it to zero. Now what we want to find out is what is the maximum value. So here you've got to think about what the maximum value is. Where is the maximum value located? 
it's located at the very top of your parabola. So let's say that this was our parabola. It would be the very highest point. Where, what is located at that highest point? The vertex. So if we can find the vertex, there's different ways to do it. We could use negative b over 2a and then plug that back in. That's the way we used to do it. We could find vertex form. That's what we're practicing here. So if we're doing our vertex form, we're going to add the 50 to the other side. Factor your six, negative 16 out. Negative 16 times a negative 4 is a positive 64. Take your B value divided by 2, square it, we get 4. So on this side, are we going to put the 4? What value goes next to the negative 50? Sixteen times four. Negative sixteen times four is negative sixty-four. This is now t minus two squared. Minus 114 So we add that back to this side And we now have the path Not the path of the ball necessarily But it is a parabola shape Formed by a calculation of the height Compared to the time What is the height after t seconds. It would take two seconds for it to reach a maximum height. So your vertex is at 214. It's a maximum because the a value is greater than zero and your y value is 114. So to answer your question what is the maximum height of the ball? It's when y is 114. Here we're looking for the area of this triangle. Look at the information that they give us. They give us this full side, so we'll call that the base. They give us something perpendicular to the base, so we'll call that the height. So we know the area of a triangle is half base times height. Here they say the area is 144. We could write the base, x plus 10, and then the height is 2x. That would work completely fine. Typically, we would like to write the monomial first and then the binomial second. Not that it matters, but typically we see it that way. So there's a couple different things we can do here. Remember, we're trying to solve for x. So what would you think? Remember that this isn't equaling 0 yet. So we, we wouldn't set our parentheses equal to zero, thinking it's going to answer this question. We can take half of 2x. Distribute your 10 through. And 
now we're looking here remember we want to solve for x we can't take the square root of both sides because it has a b value but if we completed the square then we could take the square root of both sides so I'm going to take my b value divided by 2 I squared it and got 25 So this becomes 169, over here becomes x plus 5 squared. Notice this does not have parentheses, uh, sorry, this does not have a b value. It does have parentheses. There's no b value involved. So here we can take the square root, we can take the square root, we get plus or minus 13 equals x plus 5. So we're going to get 13 equals x plus 5, and we're going to get negative 13 equals x plus 5. By subtracting 5, we're going to get 8. By subtracting 5, we're going to get negative 8, negative 18. If you look at what happens when you plug that in, that means your height would be negative uh, 36, and that shouldn't work. You can't have a distance of a negative in a geometry problem. If x was 8, you'd get 16. 8 would give you 18 on the side. Multiply that together, you get 144 when you divide it by 2. So answer the question, what is the value of x? Eight units.